I'd rather struggle in the wine capital of the world because at least I can be every person I'm going to see me he's own some winery. I'd rather struggle there. I will learn every minute, day to night, that, uh, that everyone knows about the wine. I will breathe in, breathe out wine. And that's what I did. I put myself uh, in Bordeaux and I tell you this, that was one of the most daring decisions I have done in my life. I didn't know any French. You've become quite a speaker, Mr. Saru Katuria. I must say that. Sorry? You've become quite a speaker, I must say that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well Thank done. you, sir. Well done. So, I, you have to put yourself into that place. And I will say, if you want to struggle, yes. And I think I, that's a good thing to have. You rather struggle in the beginning of your life versus you struggle when you are 40 years old. I mean, you ask me now to do what I did when I was 25. There's no way in the hell I will do it. Not going to happen. Uh, it's a different different life. So I will suggest, I mean, uh, you go to Bordeaux or you can go to Italy uh, or you can go to London. London also a very good place. There's a lot of good wine schools. The best is from London. Um, but I don't know right now with this, all this COVID, it's very difficult. Uh, I, will, I will suggest to look, look at the options. Uh, or you can come to California. There's a big, very good wine institute in California as well. So put yourself in, into those places where you have the most people you can find with the same industry. So that will be my advice. Any other questions regarding? Uh, no, at the moment. Uh, I guess he got his answer uh, that first he need to uh, select the area of his specification, area of his specialization, because within wine um, industry, there are so many different um, uh, jobs. <laughs> So you need to be specific and then look for it in India first at the moment, I think, uh, during the COVID. And then he can move forward. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Swarov. And, and, and I'm can, here. I mean, if can, anyone needs any 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 people or any contacts, I mean, that's, that's one thing I have to tell everyone. Never take this industry so granted because this industry is so small, so small. If you think industry is big, it is not. Uh, there, Everyone is connected to somewhere. Uh, you may, you may say, you may root to someone one day like, oh, I'm not going to see that person again. You never know that that one person will become your boss one day and you will be end up working. So the way to succeed in our hotel business is the relationship. That is the only asset you're going to have. That's the only asset you can keep with you. And people talk about their resume and I can tell you this. All day long, I got 20 year experience, I got 25 or 30 years. That has no relevance if we have no relationship. Trust me that you can have a five year experience and have a brilliant relationship with people, brilliant people skill. You will be far more successful than the guy with a 30 year experience. So remember this, especially for all the IHM people who are coming from one year to four year, build that relationship. That is your asset not anyone's and no one can take away from you people can fire you from the job but they cannot take the relationship from you so remember that now let's do this oh sorry uh, i forgot my kid was sleeping <laughs> uh understanding uh, a u.s market and a demographic i choose this topic yes i'm from u.s and i think this is very interesting because what we see from U.S. or when people see from U.S. to India. And I think I do have a question to the uh, panel before I go through this. When they see U.S., let's see uh, if you can name uh, four cities, all the panel. Anyone up? Mr. Ashish Tyagi? Good. Any four cities you know, or, or when you see United States, what what is the first thing comes in your mind? California, like the ma major gro grape growing regions. Okay. What else? Who else? Other. What, what is the first thing comes in your mind when you see United States? Other, other, sir. Uh, uh, Saurabh, our Saurabh. 
Yeah. Uh, when you, the, when, you they, when I say United States, what is the first thing comes in your mind? Donald Trump. Yes. Yeah. That's the. That, that's the. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a good one. Um, Otherwise, also challenges. A uh, lot of challenges. Lot of fun. Like lifestyle is good. Sir, Mithil, sir. When you talk about USA, what comes to my mind is, is all my relatives living there. Yes, see, that's what I'm talking. And where, if I can ask, Mithil, sir? Uh, my nephew is as good as my son. He used to be in, uh, I don't know where, now he's in Dallas. Yes. Okay, yes, yes. So yes, I have yeah, yeah. a mind of uh, connecting him to you because I love him like anything. And uh, I love you like anything. You know that already. So yeah. I would like to connect with him. He's in Dallas. So, uh, And I think of so many others. My sister, my aunts, my, my mama. Ji. No Hollywood movie, no, no Avengers, no Star Trek, no Angela Jolie, no Brad Pitt. Oh, of course, of course, they rule my lives. They rule my <laughs> life. These people. You know, I, I, tell you, I, I tell you this why I asked this question. Because when I moved uh, uh, in in US in 2009, that was a time when Slumdog Millionaire just released. And I think that's the best thing could happen in my life. Uh, the Slumdog Millionaire had such a good reviews and they win Oscars. So everywhere I go, they look at me. Slumdog Millionaire, have you seen that movie? I'm like, what's going on with this? So it kind of gave me a good uh, of them too to talk to me. So it is the reason I ask because people are very funny in how they behave and how they see you. So they they see me as a slum. They're like, and they ask, is that real? That was all real happening. I'm like, yeah, that's real. I'm like, oh, I'm so sad. I'm like, no, 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 they're all fine. They're making billions than more than you. So don't be sad. And it is, it is funny how people see India. So, and then there was another thing. They will look at me that, oh, you guys drink? We don't know that. And they always confuse India and Pakistan because the Pakistanis, they don't drink. But we drink. I'm like, what are you talking about? We are the second largest consumer of rum. Like we drink the most, all the brown spread, brown spread, I'm not talking the black spread, sorry. All the black spread has been produced is being drink drunk in India. And I said the second one year we drink more black label than they produce in a Scotland. So we we know how to drink. That's not an issue. It's 8 p.m. so let's drink. Uh, <laughs> I must share something with you. Yes. Uh, right now we are having a state of lockdown in, in uh, uh, Uttarakhand. I mean not in Uttarakhand as much. Dehradun has been declared a green zone now. But uh, a few weeks, maybe a few days ago, there was a lockdown. And then the government relaxed the lockdown and they opened liquor shops for a, for a little while. And the people were on top of each other, you know. <laughs> and the government had to then force, forcefully say, okay, no more sale of liquor. And People are really crazy about liquor in India. So you know uh, why? Because they all married, sir. <laughs> Mr. Saurav, I would like to ask your permission to launch a poll. We've been uh, uh, 50 minutes into the webinar now. May I yes. please launch a poll? First yes. poll of the day. The first poll of the day is, how do you rate Mr. Saurav Katuria on a scale of 1 to 10? 1 being the least and 10 being the most. This is my question to all attendees. Please rate the effectiveness of Mr. Saurav Katuria as a speaker from a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the smallest and 10 being the most. Please quickly participate in the poll so that we can get on. It is now 12.30 in the night in US where Mr. Saurabh Kathuria is uh, broadcasting live from and uh, it is very generous of him that he has chosen to be with his college, with his, with the professors of his college, with the students of IHM Merit, with, and at such an ungodly hour. Oh man, I was winning as a 72 person, not 69. Look at that. <laughs> so, 
So sixty-eight uh, percent have given them ten per ten out of ten. Twenty-nine percent have given them nine out of ten. Okay. And uh, seven to eight. Six percent. I am going to end the polling in three, two, and one. Let me now, please, with the permission of the speaker, let me share the results. So this is for all the attendees and for the panelists and for the speaker to see that 65% of them feel that he is 10 out of 10 and 30% uh, feel is 9 out of 10, which is very good, very good. Uh, I'm going to stop the sharing and ask Mr. Saurabh to please resume. Mr. Saurabh, one question from my side. Uh, yes. Like all U.S. wines has got like a warning for sulfite levels in them. No, is uh, what warning? What sulfite warning? Sulfites like uh, all the wines they contain sulfur. The sulfite levels in the wine, uh, all the U.S. wine have a warning for that. No, it's for everywhere. The sulfur we use sulfite for every wine around the world, not just U.S. Yes. But what warning we're talking about? On the label, like we put that uh, this much percentage is there, or it is some percentage which is being allowed as permittable levels? Oh, I'm not aware. Uh, we, in our label law in Spain, and the label law, what I know in uh, in uh, France, we just have to say uh, on the back of the label that it has the contained sulfite. We yeah. don't uh, explain the percentage, uh, how much sulfite we have. Um, who, uh, where is this article coming from, if I may ask? If you can ask no. the person, then we can come back. No, no, I was just saying that uh, we have this uh, sulfite levels because uh, some uh, very few people are allergic. So they just put it like that. Although all wines which have been produced, they contain uh, sulfite levels. It is uh, there in the natural process. Yeah, but they have to say it. I'll show you. Hold on. Yes. So, so like that. Uh, ooh. Yes, sir. So that on the bottle. So it is very normal. I mean, we use sulfite. The reason when we say it contains sulfite, we don't pour sulfite in the wine. So what happened is um, we need to make sure our oak barrels are clean. And there's only processes to use to clean the barrel with the sulfite. So we have all, every, all the bacteria are killed. So when the wine goes back, so they get some minimal, uh, the container, some, some, some sulfite. So that's, it's not that dangerous to drink, but that's what we have, legally we have to mention on the back label if it is contained sulfite. Now, in France, a lot of times they use egg white. So okay. you can use egg white or you can use contained sulfite. So there's a lot of different places, ways where you can clean the barrels. So yes. Yeah, go for a difficult one. Uh, yes, so uh, the poll option is still up on my screen. How do I remove that? Okay, I removed it, okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you to giving me some 10 marks. Uh, I tell you this, if I will be them, I will never give 10 out of 10 because you always keep the room to improve. No, no, please take a compliment with, with the spirit that Sachin Tendulkar takes. You know, when somebody says, that's a wonderful sixer, he doesn't say, um, no, that was a fluke, I'm sorry, you know, he doesn't do that. <laughs> he, only he just says, thank you. Oh, you know, that's, that's how we should take a compliment, Mr. Saurabh. I mean, I'm sorry to, to be coaching you, but it's very difficult to kill a teacher, you know. <laughs> My teacher. <laughs> No, no, no. This is all good. Um, all right. So let's start this. So um, just to give you a little bit of understanding, U.S. is a very, very big country. Uh, you, I just put this map and I love the map. And I don't know, uh, before I went to the wine business, I was not a big 
found a map, but now since in the wine business, maps becomes my life. And when you see this map, this is a huge country. And we got 50 states and all 50 states have a different law and different rules and different people. And the reason I ask in the beginning of this chapter, like when you see US, what do you see? And it's very easy because if you, if you've not been to US or if you've been to maybe New York or Miami, doesn't mean you have, you have seen US, you have just seen few part of United States. Uh, you have not seen the whole United States. And I travel the whole year. My, uh, my travel is 70, 70% uh, of travel. Uh, this is because of coronavirus, I'm not traveling. I'm out almost three weeks at a time. I'm out traveling somewhere in the United States. And I have to remind myself, not just uh, how I talk, how I behave, what clothing I use too. That's funny, just, you may have one kind of suitcase, I have a three or four different suitcases. And there's a different wardrobe. If I'm going in Florida, there is no way in the hell that I will go in the suit. You will be in a shorts, uh, casual polo, and that's how they, they run the business over there. Uh, you're going in um, DC, Washington DC, it has to be all in suit. Uh, you're going in uh, Chicago, you need a jeans, sports jacket, shirt with a collar up like this. So there is a lot of demographic has changed how they behave and how they wear. And if you don't look how they look, it's not going to do justice for you. And then you're going to look like someone, someone outside, outsider. And you don't ever want to look an outsider. You want to look like I am from here. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I want to show, talk about US, the whole journal is who the US is, and we're going to pick and choose all the cities, and we're going to show you some information. Now, yes, we talked about we have 50 other states, and they all have a different alcohol distribution. Now, as we're talking about wine, and I want to share this um, data with you, US is the number one wine drinking country in the world not by per capita. Per capita is still um, France, Italy, and uh, Spain are the three largest uh, country. Now, when you, yeah, okay, here, sorry about that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, okay, let me take you to Chicago where I am. So, as a hotelier, you need to see some of these data. And uh, when you're talking about the United States, and I can tell you the Chicago wine industry is three times more than Indian wine industry. Uh, we do a one brand alone can do a million case in Chicago. And we are not talking about the whole wine business. Uh, this is how big this business, this industry in Chicago city, this is just a Chicago city. And I'm not counting all the suburbs around it. Now, Understanding we have uh, almost 2.6 million people. We got 200 theaters, 200 art galleries, and the weather in Chicago is horrible. And when we're talking about the weather is, we got in winters, it starts in November, we get negative 20, negative 30s. Uh, and we're talking about Fahrenheit, not even Celsius. Celsius is an even uh, bigger number. And that number, negative we stays negative for three to four months so summer for chicago is the key like we wait for a sun out like yeah today was sun out my office was outside on my uh, backyard and you see everyone is out the whole day because we didn't get much sun the total sunny day we get is maximum uh, 90 days so imagine the sun is very important for us and that is a part of our culture but those 90 days we go rock the sun out and we're partying outside, the barbecue, everything is, that 90 days, we party hard, no work. And that everyone knows who live in Chicago. Now, my question before uh, there's something is missing, uh, you see that after, in, after uh, nearly 200 galleries and in between uh, 77 communities. Uh, the missing piece is, if, can anyone guess how many restaurants we have in Chicago? This is a question to anyone. Is it a wild question? Yes. Remember, it's not a big city. We had a speaker recently 
and he gave us the answer for chicago how many let's see chicago, if he gave the right one he told us how what was that uh, who was that was it akhilesh or who was that uh, uh, ashish yes mr akhilesh behal i guess sir akhilesh he gave us a great figure you know a great figure that for every so many people there is a restaurant and there are restaurants everywhere and you know so what is the answer so you guys know it i do we don't remember we we been you know we got recordings of everything but we don't have time to listen to them all right so let's I, guess it i guess i guess i guess it was 2000 who's that? who else we do the poll search is anyone answering in the uh, the chat box please guys say some number is 2000 3000 1000 I can give you a clue in a 2 miles radius uh in Chicago downtown we have 3000 restaurants and I'm not counting everyone this is just 2 miles radius we have over 3000 restaurants that's unbelievable unbelievable so the answer is 7300 restaurants and these are insane and I tell you why when you're looking at the United States the trend the 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 restaurant trend start from three cities new york la chicago you have all the michelin star restaurants a lot of michelin star restaurants are here chicago is the number one uh, num- top 5 tourist destination in the united states we have a uh, airport is the one of the biggest airport in the united states so as well so we have a lot of tourists coming in so restaurant business is the our bone uh, of the business the industry now just because we have 7000 restaurants it makes it takes a lot of responsibility for the restaurant uh, the chefs the servers the managers to give that service and if you're not a, if you don't give good service if you don't have good food they're going to close out they have other option 7300 restaurants and i tell you this when i was a sales guy on the street in chicago i used to park my car and i used to see at least 10 to 12 restaurants a day Uh, just to visit and just move around in a few mile radius and i kept up doing this for months and i couldn't finish my whole route because there's so many restaurants now the competition the competition is great because that competition bring the excellence of how you can create the one of the best cocktails how the excellence of the service the excellence of uh, the cooking as a chef and and that's where chicago come from people ask me when like can you suggest me a, the restaurant in chicago i like if you're in downtown just hop in to anyone they are phenomenal because if they are not there if they are there they are for the reason and if they're not if they don't have a good food or tasty food they will close out in a week people will not go we are a foodie we are a foodie city and we not just foodie city we also like customer service so think about chicago think about uh, uh this is the we don't have people from outside this is not a community where you have people around the world come every day or every year we don't have like that we are not new yorker we are we are not the we are not the kitchery of all the culture uh people live in chicago they are here for years so people everyone know each other uh, who they are their relationship their grandfather so there is the the sense of community we have in chicago and that's what i love here because it is um, i feel that i'm home i know people uh new york is a very cold city we're going to talk about that too but to be relevant in chicago and just for you to understand sir i just remembered my nephew that i was talking about he was in dallas and he's uh, i think two months ago he's brought property in uh, chicago so he lives in chicago only oh so awesome I'll, i'll make it a point that you two get together Awesome yes the top of Fiani is a wonderful person he's a he's the right. best person that I know. Abhinav Gupta is his name so Awesome Awesome you met yes, so Chicago now huh? Yes sir uh, you also see how many hotels we have the we take a big pride uh, in Chicago how many hotels we have and uh, every hotel and I can tell you we have a beautiful view we got a lot of, we have a lakefront 26 miles so we got a lot of good view Uh, we got over 40 45000 room this is just chicago and the reason i have this lights because all the cities coming next 
you will forget Chicago. You think this is big? Who will think this is big? Raise your hand. You don't need to say yes or no. No one thinks this is big. All right, now let's move to the next. Oh, where is it moving? Oh, oh. Excuse me. We got a paper jam. <laughs> can anyone can hear me? Yes, yes. Mr. Sodom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. We have a paper jam. Oh. Uh, nothing coming. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Let me stop sharing and do it again. Can I do that? Yes, please. Anything at all. Yeah. Even my cursor is not moving. Uh, Mr. Peter. Sir, that is the best uh, option we can do. Yeah. Uh, sir, I need to stop sharing the screen and then start up again. Because it's um, sometimes it hangs up. Yeah. There is a, a good system glitch. We have right now 50 people in this webinar. It's going great. What I can do, I can start taking questions for all the people that it fix. Hmm. So did you uh, stop sharing the screen? No, I don't, my cursor is not, I didn't even see the cursor. All right. Uh, Mr. Azhar, do you have this presentation with you? Not this one, sir. I don't have this. Uh, Azhar, sir, we can do one thing in that. You can just change uh, the... Uh, uh, I mean, you take the right for presenting the screen, then we can uh, give it back. So, my, then might it works. Yes. Great call, Abhishek. I can do that. Yes, sir. Well, as we're fixing our technical issues, uh, I will... Uh... Yes, um, I would like to ask a question meanwhile until it gets yes. fixed. Uh, I just wanted to ask, I mean, um, um, uh, while I was studying wines, I heard about this uh, equator thing, that uh, the wines are grows best in the um, uh, Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere, 30 to 50. So, uh, but when we uh, th uh, see about India, we have most of the wineries in um, uh, close to the south areas yes. and uh, we don't have much in the northern uh, which uh, which falls under this 30 to 50 uh, hemisphere so yes. what is the reason is that true that this this is the line which is only uh, good for wine growing or there is something else which plays important so, role? so the reason actually the reason really behind we don't want the fertile land for the wine, we want uh, a, a very bad land and uh, we want, uh, we don't want fertile land, we want rocks, we want granite. So anything, so you see all the, the degree where India falls in, it is, has the most fertile land. And that's why you see India being one of the, the country have the most corn and the food available. And yes. the countries where you have, where all the wine growing country, they don't grow anything else. If you go Spain, if you go uh, uh, France or Italy, the only thing that you see is, is the vineyards. They may have some local veggies and here and there, but it's maybe some few fertile microclimate, they have that land. And, uh, but it's purely what we want for the wine is, we, w we don't want fertile land. In India, we have a lot of fertile land. And that's is the issue for the okay. grape. We don't want to give, we don't want grapes. In order to produce the best grape, you want grapes to struggle. You want roots to struggle, go deeper uh, down to the earth, get all the minerals and every uh, purities they can get. 
uh, if the root will not struggle, they become lazy and we make, we make lazy wine. Uh, we have vineyards uh, over 100 year old. And, and then we're looking for the roots, which is that old, and they produce a very small cluster. Uh, the big difference between the, the grape which we produce the wine versus what we eat, the very different grape. Uh, the grape we eat, we want bigger and juicy and we don't want the acidity or, or, or the fruit or the alcohol. Them table grapes. We call them table grapes. Table, table grapes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what we use, the grape we use for uh, the wine is we're looking for very small clusters, very small berries. So what we're looking at uh, is, the, is the sugar content and we're looking at the, uh, the skin and under the skin you get all the color. And then we're looking for the, the tannins. So we're looking for the whole balance structure. And we have the machine and we have the palate. We can go and eat. And I have done this so many times in the vineyards and eat the grape and try to chew and try to get all the flavors and to understand the grape is ripe enough or not. So those are very different grape. And I'm sorry I was trying to get too technical. It's very, sometimes you just fell into that emotions uh, of the grape, but uh, yes. The answer is uh, the problem with the India is the way we're growing the land is, is too far time. And even the wines which is coming from India, they are good, but they're not producing super high quality wine. They're good, making a really good uh, value wine. And uh, being in India, I'm very proud. And being all this climate change, it is, you see, you will see in the future, you will see the India will make some good wines. So, so keep an eye on that one. Okay, All right, let me thanks. start sharing back. I must, uh, I must say something here. Uh, very recently, we had, uh, we had uh, Sula vin wines, Sula vineyards in our campus. Yes. And that was also arranged by Mr. Uh, Azar Hussain and Mr. Ashish Tyagi. Uh, they gave us, uh, would you like to tell us about it? Okay, they gave us about, uh, I would say Mr. Azhar or Mr. Ashish, could you please tell us about that experience quickly? Yes, sir. I'm having a problem again here. Uh, That's all right, you can please struggle right. with your problem and uh, Mr. Azhar will tell you about the wine tasting session that we recently had in IHM Meerut. So we conduct a wine tasting session with, uh, um, with support of Sula Vineyards. They visit the institute and they bring uh, with them uh, some white, red and sparkling wine for the student to taste. Uh, they have um, um, first, uh, with their presentation, they have told uh, some basics about the wines, wines making, the difference, and then they given the taste. So first, uh, it was the first time experience for the student to taste the wines. And uh, it was really great. They could, uh, uh, they could taste the different wines and uh, they could note down the flavors. Uh, so it was a great experience. Um, um, at the same time, I have a personal question from you, Mr. Kathuria. Yes. Can I ask you that? Okay. Um, you know, when um, even I was working as an assistant sommelier in Dubai. So yeah. at that time, uh, when we used to do wine tasting, um, uh, my general manager, whenever he used to taste with me wines, and I have some opinion about this uh, wine. So my opinion was, uh, uh, you know, always uh, carried away because of his influence. So does it happen with you also that with someone you are tasting wines and even though you are not getting these flavors that you have to say, yes, sir, I'm getting the strawberries and I'm getting the... Yeah. Uh, or <laughs> I, I tell you my experience. So I tell you this until now, um, uh, the blackberry, uh, which is very uh, evident uh, when we drinking wine from Rioja, uh, that there's a lot of blackberries people get or uh, blueberries. So I was in Bordeaux and we did this tasting and this wine maker talking about blackberries and blueberries. And I'm like, what is this? This is this is very different now. You Google, you know how the blackberry look like. Life is very easy nowadays. Uh, uh, back then life was not easy like that. You need to search where the black blackberry is. And in India back then, the imported fruit was only like it was not like a kiwi was the imported fruit in 2003. Remember all those that you go to all those weddings and you see all the imported fruit. We don't have the culture of to have the blackberry or raspberries. And if you don't, you don't have the uh, the memory in the uh, the head. 
or you don't understand uh, the flavors? To answer that is, uh, let me start, let's say, when I say lemon, everyone can think how the lemon look like and know the flavor and you can feel that there could be a watery mouth because you can feel it uh, because you know uh, the flavor, you understand the flavor. Now, if it's something you never had, it's very difficult for mind to recognize. So you have to train yourself. And that's why I was showing one of the books I have all the blackberries that you can smell and taste. Now, even all these years, I still cannot recognize blackberry. I cheat. When I, every time I see the tasting notes, and if I see there's a blackberry, I go on my tastings and I say, I think I'm getting the blackberries. Uh, and, and that's, uh, and then they understand it like, oh yeah, you're right. And I said, how about the blue one too? Like, yeah, 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 you're right. So sometimes you have to fake it to make it. Sir. Thanks. This is exactly what happened in the wine tasting session. So he would give us a little tot of something and then he would say, please have it. And then we would all have it. You know, we were about a hundred students and uh, Mr. Sharad was also there. Mr. Himang Rajan was also there. And then he would say, what do you taste? And then we used to all think, you know, and then we used to say this and that and that. And then he would say, do you taste peppers? And then all of us would say, yes, 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 we taste peppers. <laughs> yeah. So we needed him to tell us, you know, what we taste like. Now, I would also like to request you, Mr. Saurav Kathuria, to show that uh, box, that magic box. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and what I'm going to do is, um, we're going to continue our presentation. Because something is going on here, but I have my presentation on a different computer. So I, we can continue going. Uh, I can give all the data, but let me show the box. So there's two things if you want to know about the wine. I know there was a guy who was talking about there is called Wine Fully. This is a really good book. And this is exactly what the guy was doing. It explained you everything. Is all the palettes explain you what palette can feel. There's something is all here. Now, let's say you were trying, uh, I'll show you the book, Samia Blanc, Albarino. So they give you the name and they give you all the fruit you can expect from this grape. So that's how you train yourself. So remember this, if I give you Samia Blanc or Cabernet, you don't know, it requires an experience. So you need to understand the flavors. You need to remember this flavor. So we do this exercise. So I have this, bought this book. It's called Knows the One. And it is, took me years to get this one because you have to win it. It comes with all the cards. Please understand people, it took him years to get this and he's so freely sharing it with all of us. Thank you. This, this is this is not an ordinary book. I can tell you that this has 54 flavors. So what you do every morning, not, not, not these days, uh, some days I come, I give my wife this book. She have all the flavor names and I close my eyes and I pick one, open, smell it and I write it down what I smell. So you have to practice, practice, practice. Uh, and if you don't practice in the wine business, uh, you're going to fail. Uh, you won't get the senses. One of the most important thing is even with you, people who are working for f and service. And there's a one thing when you work on the service, even the chef says, when you go in the kitchen and before you serve in the restaurant, you make sure if chef missed something, you make sure everything is properly cooked. You make sure all the flavors and aromas from that. For example, let me give you the butter chicken. That would be very easy. If you're serving someone butter chicken, you know what the garnish is. You know how the butter chicken smells like. You know the whole look. And if there's something wrong, there is no way you can go and serve that butter chicken. That's your responsibility. When the chef's cooks, it's done. When you're going, it becomes your responsibility. Same way in the wine. When I'm opening the bottle, 
of wine. It is my responsibility to check everything. It is, I cannot give you wine which is bad. And there is no way it will happen. So that's one of the things we follow in our service business. Uh, my computer is still going. And let me go back. Uh, I have my presentation here. So after Chicago, we're supposed to cover uh, New York. So just to make you understand, New York is a big city and it's a wild, wild west city, to be honest. That's my opinion. Uh, you need a special personality uh, to live in New York, to appreciate New York. And New York, what, what people say is a concrete jungle and that what it is. Um, now, you, we ask you a question, how many restaurants you can guess for uh, Chicago? Now the same question back again, how many restaurants you think is in New York? You can multiply by three at least. I tell you this, uh, in New York, if you go 73 restaurants a day and you go 365 days, you still cannot finish the whole, all the restaurants in New York, it's that many. We have 26,600. 26, uh, oh, here we go. How do you get this one? Hey, we are back in the game. Uh, so we go down, sir. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so excited. So we are on the page number 11. Just a sec, just a sec. I came to your rescue. <laughs> 